G'day trendsetters, I'm John with Gravel Cyclist. Today I'm coming to you with an ultra long-term review of the Ribble Gravel SL. This bike has been ridden exclusively by my partner, the lady gravel cyclist. In fact, let's bring her into camera shot right now. And here she is folks, the lady gravel cyclist, AKA LGC, AKA my partner in everything really. And the Ribble Gravel SL is the bike she used to rediscover the joys of cycling. She hadn't ridden since you were a kid. <laughs> that point aside, LGC has been riding this bike in my company in states such as Florida, Georgia, Alabama, California, Minnesota, and Oregon. Like some of you watching this video, LGC is a parent. She also has a responsible full-time job working in the medical field, making a real difference. If you want to see what she gets up to, check her out on Instagram, Lady Gravel Cyclist. You'll see all sorts of bike selfies and scenery and so on. Momentarily, I'm going to ask LGC some probing questions about her cycling experiences aboard the Ribble Gravel SL. But in the meantime, you'll have to listen to me bang on about the technical details of this fine bicycle. Ribble Cycles has been in the cycling industry a long time. It was founded, if my memory serves me correctly, in the late 19th century or the early 20th century. Nowadays, it's one of the UK's biggest online mail order operations, and they ship bikes, including gravel bikes, worldwide. The Ribble Gravel SL is the brand's gravel bike designed for speed, agility, and a crap ton of fun. The frame features robust carbon monocoque technology and some aerodynamic properties, if that's your bag, that overall, ideally, make this a very fine machine for riding the gravelly roads less traveled. It also rides quite well as a road bike. This variant of the Gravel SL is 100% bespoke. What does bespoke mean? Well, it means custom. You can't buy this bike in this spec, but this is basically a test bed for the SRAM Rival ETAP Access group set with Zips Fantastic 303S wheel set. When this group set was launched a little while ago, Ribble were kind enough to supply me with a frame set for that collaboration and zip with the wheels. In fact, you can see detailed, no bullshit reviews of the group set and the wheel set linked in the description below. Bike sizing is a very personal thing. In fact, you should never listen to these online wanker keyboard heroes telling you what sort of bike you should ride. With that said, LGC is riding the extra small size of this bike, which translates to a 52 centimeter top tube. The chain state length is 435 millimeters, which interestingly enough is the same length across every size. What the hell was that of this bike? Bloody dog just runs through the camera, through the scene, doesn't give a shit. Bloody rude, man. Tire clearance on this bicycle is very good. It will happily handle 700C by 45 millimeters with room to wiggle and 650B by 47 millimeters. The bike supports one by or in this variant, two by. In fact, most of the pre-built Ribble Gravel SLs you see on their website are one by exclusive, but I don't know, I happen to like to buy a lot. I hope LDC does, we'll ask her about that later on. The very fancy carbon monocoque frame here at the heart of this bicycle is built from T1000 and T800 carbon fibers, which has obviously been optimized for ride quality in the right area, stiffness in the right area. And I'm not gonna use the C word, okay? Compliance, bloody bull that word is, but it's engineered to be a comfortable ride across any terrain you put this bike through. In fact, if I didn't mention this earlier, this bike has stood up to a year of some pretty serious dodgy road use by LGC, currently out of camera shot. The bike comes fitted with a ton of mounts. You've got the usual bottle cage mounts on the down tube and on the seat tube, and of course, the third bottle cage mount beneath the down tube, AKA what I call the cow catcher position. I wouldn't drink a bottle ever from that position, but you can always ch chuck some tools there. I don't know. The top tube mount, the bento box mount, and right here, it's fitted with a Hellhole Outfitters bag out of Charleston, South Carolina. G'day if you're watching, fantastic bag. LGC likes to chuck snacks, 
My car keys, all sorts of bollocks in that bag. Great place to stash stuff. And if bikepacking or riding in dodgy weather is your thing, the bike's got full support for fenders, and you can also slap on racks, and the fork's got all these handy mounts, so you can carry all sorts of business on the front of the bike. In fact, we did chuck a rack onto the front end of this bike. It's by Old Man Mountain. You can check out our little feature video where LGC goes to the bloody store, picks up some beer and rides home with it. So more than just racy, it's also handy. Lovely. Other features of the bike, bottom bracket, the well-proven English thread standard. Love that. The cockpit is a pretty standard zip affair. You can, of course, run integrated if you desire. And in terms of the cable routing for the hydraulic brakes, they're all internalized. So front brake through the fork, flat mounting, of course, this being 2023 now. And the rear, again, brake housing runs inside the frame. Now, some people are pretty against internalized routing. I understand that, but generally in this day and age, the brake bleed, you know, set and forget and re-bleed once in a while. And Tram Rival ETAP, we don't have to worry about any shift cables because it's wireless. If you got an interest in seeing how this bike was built by my good mate Pete at Brickyard Bike Company of Phoenix City, Alabama, you can see it all in excruciating detail. Frame, the group set, everything, whoop, into its current form. The other aerodynamic feature is the seat post. It's a wedge shape. Now, I freely admit, it's not my bag. I like the 27.2 millimeter variant round, but that's another story. You can also customize the paint. Ribble's got a very fancy paint scheme selector, but this is the standard livery that you would receive if you order this bike from Ribble headquarters. All right, that's enough banging on from me about some of the techie features of the Rebel Gravel SL. I think it's now time to grab LGC, bring them to camera shot, and ask her some super detailed probing questions about this bike. LGC, you were completely new to cycling, so you didn't really have a reference point when you first began riding this bike, but are there any positives that jump to mind? The last time I was on a bike was probably 1982 or 83 on an Earth Cruiser which was um, considerably heavier than this. So I guess the lightness of it was pretty amazing. I believe I had one gear. Um, so being able to shift gears is also pretty cool. How about negatives? Uh, the only problem that we seem to have had with the bicycle was the loosening of the headset at first, but it's, we've seemed to resolve that since then. I've had no problems with it slipping. I think the only tricky thing is when we have to adjust it. It's kind of difficult to um, hold the, I don't know what that piece is called, inside of there from falling in. Oh, the like, wedge yeah, the wedge expander. Yeah. I threw you in the deep end in LJ, Georgia. Anybody watching this channel who's ridden in North Georgia knows there's some pretty steep, nasty, dodgy roads, especially if you venture to the gravelly roads less traveled. How did you find this bike was for climbing and descending? I guess the experience, how was it? Was the bike a hindrance in any way? So um, the climbing is, is okay. Um, once I decided it was okay to walk, then I was good with that. Um, but I still try to do my best to get up the, the hill or um, mountain, uh, you know, by myself without walking. Or if I do end up walking, I would end up getting back on the bike and trying a little bit more. But I feel like I've gotten a lot stronger since then and the bike hasn't been a hindrance for me. Even after a year of riding, I think it was even probably March of last year when we did that trip, even after all the time since then, I don't feel super comfortable descending, especially on gravel. I just, uh, I trust, I try to trust the bicycle, but I just can't help thinking that something, you know, could happen. But yeah, I find descending to be the, probably the, the most difficult thing for me to get past mentally. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't have any uh, reflection on the bicycle itself. This is just something I have to get straight in my head. This bike is pretty racy, obviously. Did you find it was comfortable to ride over the long haul, say some of those centuries you talked about, assuming you had your tire pressure set correctly, which segues me real quick, do you yourself a favor, check out my recommended tire pressures for gravel bikes, linked in the description below. 
Even after riding a few centuries on this bicycle, I didn't feel completely wasted. Probably one of the most challenging events that we did was the Dirty Pecan last year. Um, I had only been riding for a few months and we ended up on that gum swamp road that was like, what, several miles worth of like beach sand. <laughs> hey. Yeah, gum swamp, it's a uh, MF error like I said before. Granted, I had some influence into you riding and reviewing this bike, but would you recommend this gravel SL to someone completely new to cycling? Yes. <laughs> How about an experienced rider? Yeah, you like your Ribble. Oh yeah, mine's the Ribble, <laughs> Ribble SL. That's another segue. Check that review, link in the description below. Ribble mostly sell this bike in a pre-built one by configuration, but you've got two by on this particular build, and I know you've ridden one by on the Trek, the Demane Plus review bike. Would you stick with two by on this bike or shift over to one by on this bike? I like the two by. I like having the, the choice of the, the gearing on this. The only reason I think I like the one by on the Demane is because it has the motor option because then it really doesn't matter that I need more gearing. I just turn up the, the motor. Speaking of gearing folks, I need chain rings 4330 and on the back 10 to 36. So you can climb some serious walls and you'll just see has done that. There are several build specifications available from Ribble's website of this particular bike, which I won't go into. Check out their website as we acquired this frame and fork separately but they're close to about us two thousand dollars factoring the exchange rates at the time of this video do you think there is good value with this frame and fork i think so considering all of the other things out there i think that it's just as good as some of the super expensive you know fancy brands i know you had a bingle or a crash or what do you want to call it on this bike or unfortunately you fractured your wrist and had to require surgery, which led to you getting an e-bike. More about that in that review. Was there anything else untoward, like during your time riding this bike? Yeah, the the crash was very quick, and um, one minute I'm riding, the next I'm on the ground. Luckily, I didn't land on the drive train side, so. Um, you know, the bike was okay. So I have um, had some minor spills where I didn't get injured. And unfortunately, those were ones where I did land on the <laughs> drivetrain side and, it, and the uh, derailleur hanger got bent a few times. There's a lovely tool where you can fix that, but after some point, it's just going to break because they're very fragile. Uh, we did end up having to replace the, the hanger. We didn't want to take any chances with it falling and breaking at an inconvenient time. So I do recommend carrying an extra one with you or at least having a spare on hand. So those of you who do uh, follow this channel you and watch the starting from scratch videos, I was trying to you know, practice shifting gears and clipping in and out of pedals. It's just not the same. <laughs> until I got out on the bicycle. I felt like there's just no substitute for riding your bicycle in the real world. LDC, any closing thoughts about the bike? Um, I would just like to thank Ribble, Zip, and Shram for contributing to this project and getting me out on a bicycle. So there you have it, LGC's ultra long-term review. Over a year of riding the Gravelly Roads Less Traveled. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel for real world, no bull ultra long-term gravel bike reviews such as this one, other product reviews, of course, ride experience videos, and my favorite, general madness. As all of it is released to the channel, I'll see you, that's right, I'll definitely see you, in the next video.